Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to First Lutheran Church here in Beaver Dam. Uh, today is January 9th, and uh, it's a sunny day, a little cold outside. Um, but thank you for joining us either on the radio or maybe you're joining us uh, via a live stream, internet, or you're here in person. So unfortunately, uh, as the world knows, and as you know, we, uh, we have this kind of rapid um, virus that's going through a lot of people. And uh, so we're asking that you would wear your mask today, and you guys are socially distanced, it looks like, and all that. And um, the more and more people, I feel like most of the people I encountered last week had texted me or sent me an email and said that they had tested positive. So we just want to not be a place where you come to church and you uh, pick up a virus that you didn't really want. So we're, we're trying to be really good about that. And that's, uh, so I will be wearing my mask all day today. Unfortunately, I'll try to speak as clear as I can. Um, but that's unfortunately just where we're at today. Uh, so a few announcements. Um, poinsettias, all the red ones are out on the cart or, or library table. And if you'd like, if you're one that uh, purchased in, in honor or memory or thanksgiving of someone, take it home with you. And, and if you really want one and you, didn't, you weren't a part of that, take, take it home with you. There's some plastic bags I brought, uh, and they're setting there where you can cover it so the wind, cold air doesn't um, knock it out, not kill it before you get it into your car or into your house. But... They'll, they'll live so much better at your house and in a window or on the table, and so you can take care of them. So please do that. Um, today is, is Epiphany Sunday, and um, so we left the white ones here, kind of white. Uh, we think of light and, you know, Epiphany, or, and we'll talk more about that. But a few other announcements. The, the Friendship Hall was painted, and uh, so if you're a little like me, a little colored blind, you may not notice, but, um, but it is brighter and cleaner. And so thank you to all the painters and people who took all the boards down, bulletin boards. And you know how it is when you paint, you got to take everything off the wall. And uh, so they worked hard and many days doing that. So thank you for, for all of you and, the, and, and, and those who, uh, who purchased the paint in that. Um, so there's that, and so there will be, now this is for education purposes, families, if you're listening, watching, there will be no confirmation tonight. Uh, we're going to postpone that and reevaluate uh, just due to um, uh, quarantine. And the same with crew and eighth graders uh, that was uh, set up for tonight at 530, that's going to be postponed uh, until next week. Uh, so watch your email on that from Heidi. And drive up communion will take place today after the service. So at nine o'clock, I'll meet you out under the canopy and uh, for drive up communion. So I believe that's enough for right now. Let us direct our hearts and minds to worship. I'll have you stand only as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Take a moment for your own personal reflection and confession before we together confess. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in your beloved children. We have turned our face away from your glory when it did not appear to it. We have rejected your word when it made us ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you call us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us so that we may bathe in your glory, the Son, born among us, reflect your love to all creation. Rejoice the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, 
inheritors of eternal life, live as free, freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Our gathering hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, 
we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the book of Psalms, and we will read it responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 8. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. As for yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'll have you stand only as you're able for the gospel reading. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. As the people were filled with expectation and were all questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. 
I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His dwindling fork in his hand to clear his thrashing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff will be burned with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven op was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and the voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the coming and living Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, this Sunday, there's a few things going on. It's uh, Epiphany Sunday, and it's also the baptism of Jesus, and it's also the Sunday that we recognize, celebrate, uh, for sure, all the people who have been baptized in the last year, from last Epiphany to this year. And um, so you will see all the water droplets on the banner that I'm looking at and referring to back there, and all those water droplets will be sent to families, and those water droplets will be placed, hopefully, in their faith chest. And um, so, but we all, <clears throat> we all recognize and celebrate uh, or rededicate our baptisms whenever there's a baptism. So we think about that as we go through the day here. But today is the, the first Sunday after Epiphany which means that um, Epiphany really was Thursday. That's when the church week begins, Thursday. And now today is Sunday, so it's the first Sunday after Epiphany. And, and we celebrate uh, and recognize Jesus' baptism, the baptism of our Lord. Now, Epiphany really means sh um, showing forth. So, like, forward, showing forth. Or manifestation, when we think about uh, an event that clearly shows something, or embodies an idea, a uh, manifestation. So therefore, it was through our Lord Jesus' baptism uh, that there was really this essential nature of Jesus that was revealed to us uh, in this story. And Luke's gospel is very, uh, really very clear in his description. As he said, now that all the people had been baptized, and Jesus had been baptized, and while he was praying, the heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descend down in bodily form like a dove and the voice came from heaven and said you are my son the beloved with you I'm well pleased and then this short little account from from Luke uh, we we are given this brief description about what happened that day how uh, this identity in Jesus how he went into the river as a carpenter as, as uh, Joseph and Mary's son a carpenter and came out anointed, is God's son. Uh, uh, anointed, um, a sense of ordination, ordained, um, stamped with the Holy Spirit and the power to go out into the world and be that messianic uh, Messiah that he was um, born to be. And we see that in this text today. Um, a great uh, Episcopal priest, um, uh, Barbara Brown Taylor, an author, a uh, preacher, she lends us some insight about this, uh, this event that took place. She said, you know, with Jesus, why not just some elegant words spoken uh, or just a simple ordination to mark this task, this, mark this passage of Jesus, this passage of moving from from carpenterhood to kind of this uh, or, uh, priesthood or this anointed hood. Uh, you know, why, why, why not just a simple, uh, elegant speech? Maybe like, you know, when God spoke, this is my son, which I'm well, you know, pleased. And, and, uh, but why, why did God have to come in, in Jesus when God could have saved all the grief and and all the suffering, and, and just make us go to God. Uh, why all this, uh, why this great mystery of, of baptism, and, and same as the great mystery of the Christmas story, the incarnation, why would God go through all that? 
Well, the answer really is, is out of love. Uh, God so loves us, right? It's God so loves the world that he gave his only son. And perhaps we could read this story today as a love story, uh, God's love story to us. And, and to go a little bit further, we think about this, this event that took place, this Jesus being baptized in the river and the dove and God's voice is the only place in the Bible where we see the Trinity, where all three persons of the Trinity were present. We, we have Jesus standing in the water, right? The second person of God. We have the dove descending, or the Holy Spirit descending in the bodily form of a dove, third person of the Trinity. And we have the voice of God speaking the first person of the Trinity. This is the only place in Scripture where we see all three persons of the Trinity present in one place in time. A love story for us. God so loves you. So the significance of the river uh, in that passage that, you know, that Jesus passed from carpenter being a carpenter's son of an earthly parent to the anointed son of God. And the river represents that passage from, uh, from slavery to freedom. Back in the, in the Old Testament, the Israelites, uh, they lived in the desert. And the desert was a secular place for them, much like us, a secular place. And, uh, and then they would have to cross the river, Jordan, to go to the promised land, the, la the land of milk and honey, the, the land where God promised for them many generations and, and to be faithful that where God would take care of them. And perhaps it means the same for us when we think about baptism, like why baptism? Like why do we... You know, why do grandpas and grandmas tell their, grand, their children or grandchildren to have their kids baptized? Or why do we practice this baptism? Why do we make such a big deal out of it? It is that crossing the river, and it represents new life. So leaving the desert or their secular life or the, the enslaved life that the Israelites led and lived and God promised them this promised land, this new kingdom, this place of God. So they had to cross the river, cross over in a sense. And the same for us, it means new life. And, it, it, and when we think about uh, new life, we, th we think about water, we think about, you know, washing away sins, we think about, you know, even if we did full immersion, a sense of drowning to your old self. And coming up out of the water to a new life, a new self. It is that kind of reality, that kind of uh, symbolism. And, uh, and, you know, water is just water, right? It, you know, God takes, we see this in Scripture, we see this the way God does things, that God takes ordinary elements, water, and does extraordinary things with it. We've seen it in water to wine, regular bread into the body in Christ of, of, of Jesus. So there's a story about this father that's reflecting on his summer vacation with his kids, and he writes about his daughter and how she says water is living. And so she, she says that, um, Daddy, water is alive. It's always moving. And, and, you know, the father said, well, what do you mean by that? Like, water is not alive. And she said, Daddy, yes, it's, it's always moving. And, and it's teeming with life, right? It's plants and fish. And, and, and if you go snorkeling, the incredible life that lives down in the water. And, 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 and of course, water sustains life, right? It's, it, so it seems like water is alive. It sustains life. And and we all need water to live, and, and life produces life. So there's something about life givingness in this water, something alive. And that's why the little girl says, Daddy, water is alive. And she says, even if you take a bucket of water and leave it out in the sun, and as the sun shines down in, it will glisten and sparkle, and, and, and it comes alive. And, and, and then she goes on a little bit further, and she shows in Scripture that when Jesus said, streams of living water and and if you are thirsty come to me and i will fill you with living water he's talking about the holy spirit 
And, and the father says, of course the water is not alive, but God makes life through water. Holy Spirit. Water is a symbol of life. A symbol of life. But also it's a symbol of death. That we drown to our old selves in water. And we come up out of the water or born again through our baptisms, through the Holy Spirit. So water is really quite a mag magical thing. And I have some water here. Uh, I said it's always proper. Luther says, remember our baptism every day when you wash your face? Splash a little water on yourself. You know, it's not a rebaptism, but it's a remembrance of your baptism. That we are sealed, stamped and sealed by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. By, it's, and, and we have received a new identity. I remember once as a, as a young kid in talking with my pastor, and um, he, he said, you know, Jim, he said, you belong to God through the waters of baptism. You have a new identity. Live in that identity. The world doesn't own you or hold you hostage any longer. You are freed through your baptism. And I've, that's always stuck with me, how God has claimed me and claimed you through our baptisms, through that magical living water and Holy Spirit, and as if God has opened the sky and spoke down on the children who are baptized and said, I love you. You are my children. Another interesting point about baptism is the, the original word is baptizo, which simply means from the early centuries is dipping. So whenever I get into this debate about immersion of baptism or the sprinkle or kind of the dipping that we do, I always think about the original language. Back in the early century, that word baptiz, bap, baptismal or to baptize, is baptizo, which means dipping. And it was when they would take a light-colored or white, a light-colored garment, and dip it into the dye. And it would take on a new identity. It was stained or dyed forever. And there was no turning it back. And that's how they understood this new identity in Christ, that we've been dipped in a die that we will never be able to turn back to our old selves. We are a new creation in God. Now, it's not an insurance policy. We still live in the same world. We still live with the same viruses and health issues, right? But we are claimed and loved by God. It's a, new, it's a relationship. Paul writes about this in, in our baptism. He writes this in Romans. He says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus was baptized into his death? And as we've been buried with him through our baptism into death, we will rise with him in a resurrection like his. So if we've been, uh, if we've been buried with him in a, in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. It's about a relationship with God in Christ kind of joined at the hips in the life of Christ, his death and resurrection. You can see there's a passing over as well there from death to new life. It's like crossing a river again from death to new life, from old self to new self, from a, a life of only knowing sin and getting caught up in the world of sin to the promised land. Now, when we think about Jesus after his baptism, he will go off into the wilderness. And, 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 and so it's a sense of ordination. That's why we see his, his baptism as an ordination, like, like it's confirmed. He is now confirmed and, and anointed to go and be this Messiah and go out and be, well, we see it as a test in the wilderness, but, but prepared and ready to go into the real world. So he does. And what do we know about that? That the devil tempts him several times to do things. You can, he said one of the times uh, the devil said, Jesus, you can have this whole kingdom. I'll give it all to you if you do this. 
And Jesus was tempted, and he knew the words, and he knew what the devil was up to, and he didn't, he didn't bite. He didn't buy into it. And then eventually, you know, uh, I think he even said something about, like the devil said, like a shiny object, like trying to draw his attention away from being this sort of messianic son of God, Messiah, but show him some shiny object to lure him away and distract him for a moment. And I think about that's a secular world for us, right? Don't we get so distracted and drawn into shiny things? And we want more and more, or we want that one, or the, what we have isn't quite good enough because this one's shinier. And that's the desert and the secular world that we live in. And crossing the waters of baptism is a way for us to enter into a new life with God where we can put away the temptations of Satan. Satan is still there. He'll, he's gone away to the opportune time. And then he will show up again. And generally when Satan shows up is when we're at our weakest moment, when we get worn down, when we, we get exhausted or burned out or really depressed, Satan shows up and says, hey, I'll give you this if you do that. And so this relationship with God is, is again, just God claiming us in our waters of baptism kind of being uh, attached at the hips of Jesus' death and resurrection, that God is, is saying, you are my children, I'm well pleased. And as if he was to go a little bit further, he'd say, listen to me. I'm your Lord and Savior. I know what's best for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God that through the water and Holy Spirit you have given your sons and daughters a new life. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Sustain us with the Spirit, the Spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, the, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit that will fear the Lord, but also rejoice in the presence of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Baptized in Water. Baptized in Water. Stand only as you're able. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King, heirs of salvation, trusting His promise, faithful. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, dead in the tomb with Christ our King, one with His rising, freed and forgiven, thankfully in water sealed by the Spirit marked with the sign of Christ our King born of the Spirit we are God's children joyfully
Woven together through the waters of baptism and with the whole church, let us confess our faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need, responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. God of wanderers, you sent the Magi from afar to witness the mystery and majesty of your birth Send us into the world with your will in our hearts and on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You created heaven and earth. Through your spirit, send your all-encompassing love over the cosmos. Bless the stars that guide our way and the night sky that invites the earth into slumber. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent the Magi to follow the star into an uncertain future. May all leaders and peoples seek your face, especially when paths are not clear. Give courage and wisdom for building roads that lead to justice and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent the Holy Family to seek safety in a new land. Protect all who make similar journeys. Send your guiding spirit to all who journey to better health and safety, especially Dorothy, Rita, Mike, Oliver, Andy, Mark, Francis, and Kelly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your glory is shown to the saints. We give thanks for those whose earthly journey has ended and now dwell with you forever. Give us signs of your continual presence until that day when we arise in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you. Confident of your grace and love made known to us, in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us a new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world in the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty, merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of the star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the water of the Jordan, you proclaimed him as your beloved son. And in the miracle of the water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the host of heaven, we will praise your name joining in your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord.
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks, giving it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken and given for you. Eat and do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, giving it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant. My blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink and do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us as we enter into your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Receive an invitation here at First Lutheran. We practice open communion, which means simply that there is no barriers, nothing keeping you from coming to the Lord's table. Uh, we'll have two stations again, as usual. Each large tray has wine, red-colored substance element, and grape juice is in the center, and then there's also gluten-free elements as well in the little glass tray on the table. Uh, this, the table is set, the gifts of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Doesn't matter. You might as well go over there.
All of you who are at home, there's a time now if you have uh, elements, bread and wine or grape juice uh, in your home, you could take some of that. Uh, Take the bread, the body of Christ is broken and given for you, receive the bread. Uh, Take a sip of grape juice or wine and the, uh, the blood of Christ shed for you. You can receive that and know that the Lord is with you always through this holy meal. I'll have you stand, those of you who are present today, as you receive uh, the post-communion blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for you have feasted on the abundance of for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive a blessing as you go out into the world. God, who leads you in paths of righteousness, who rejoice over you, who calls you by name, and blesses your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn, for those of you who are at home listening, and uh, Christ, when for us you were baptized. God's Spirit on you came As peaceful as a dove And yet as urgent as a flame As urgent as a flame God called you my beloved son You are God's servant true Sent to proclaim the reign of heaven, God's holy will to do, God's holy will to do. Straightway and steadfast until death, you then obeyed the call to serve with free and willing heart to give your life for all to give your life for all baptize us with your spirit lord your cross on us be signed that likewise in god's service we may perfect freedom find may perfect freedom find go with christ into a weary world share the good news thanks be to god